I'm John Pierce. Yes, sir. I was re been registered since 1977, 78, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, been surveying since 1955, off and on. Uh, started out actually not really. Wouldn't you really wouldn't classify it as surveying? It was measuring cotton and wheat allotments and peanut allotments for the agriculture department, where we had one to fifty inch scale, I mean one to fifty maps, aerial maps. Yeah. Go out, measure it on the ground, draw it on the map, and come back and use a perimeter, which nobody knows what it is anymore, and go around it and then measure the cotton acreage or wheat or peanuts, whatever, to make sure. In fact. The first summer I did it, my drafting teacher in high school got recommended me for the job. Well, I went out and had to measure his cotton, and he had about four acres too much. And I came back the next fall kind of sweating it. <laughs> <laughs> back then, did they make them plow it under? Yeah, they made it, had it, had it plowed up. I worked for a peanut farmer one time, and I did, till I was in my yeah. 20s, I didn't But anyway, that's the way I got rid of the story. But my great granddaddy was county server in Denton County. Back in the 70s, 1870s to about 1910 or something. Wow. Interesting story, he got reelected in 1902 when he wasn't running for the office by right in run, with two guys running for the office. That's just something about his character right yeah. there. It's pretty interesting. I, that's one of the interesting things I found when I was measuring those, doing that work for the agriculture department, in fact. My great, my granddaddy was also a good mechanic. They called him a binder mechanic, and that's when they had the binders. They go out and bind the wheat, and shock it, take the haul it to the thrashing machine. So, and I, it's kind of interesting doing that. But anyway, that's how I got into it, and really didn't really start doing it until probably full time. Or not really full time, but part time anyway. In 1968-69, somewhere in that neighborhood. But it, I've been involved in it off and on, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, but anyway, one of the things that I've been involved in education from the time I graduated from college with a teaching certificate, and then I got in surveying. Work. I started teaching over at Tarrant County. Junior College at that time is now Tarrant County College uh, on the Northeast Campus. In about 1970, a group of Fort Worth surveyors came to us and said, We need some help with surveying. And so we started offering a couple of surveying courses, and we also started a continuing education program with three, three types of courses. One was a mathematics course, mathematics of land surveying. The second one was a legal portion, and the third one was uh, analytical, which kind of spread, and it was very uh, very good. One, uh, Gary Gilly and I worked together on that quite a bit, and uh, ended up working for Gary for a couple of years. Brooks Baker but, there in yeah, Fort Worth? Brooks, Brooks Baker back in around 1980-81. And uh, it's kind of, it's interesting. That's a, some of the surveys they've done and the record the records they had were unbelievable. And you could go in and find stuff that was done in eight, in eighteen hundreds if you wanted it. And the wow. notes were there. So that's kinda of unusual in today's market. And I think that's one of the problems that surveyors have today is the fact they don't keep good notes. They don't know how to take notes. And if something ever happens to a disk or a hard drive or something, they're going to be up, up a creek without a paddle. But anyway, from a uh, studying standpoint, uh, there's lots of information out there. A good library is important, and such as uh, there are books. Some of them not no longer available, but you can get copies of them. One of them is the Spry book. Uh, and I have an electronic copy of that if anybody wants it, they can email me and I'll send it to them. The M.E. Spry book? The M.E. Spry. Wow. Uh, 
Uh, that was a very, very important It's book. a good book, good book studied by even today in yes. today's marketplace. Then there, uh, Andy Harbin wrote a book, mm -hmm. Legal Aspects of Texas Surveying. Uh, Billy Evans wrote one very similar to it for the Austin Community College when he was teaching there. And then there's some textbooks, Elementary Surveying, the, what used to be the Brinker book, uh, now it's Wolf and Guiani, is a very good book to have in your library. Uh, Black's Law Dictionary, yes, uh, good collegiate dictionary, just everyday English. Uh, one of the things you really have to concentrate on is when you're studying or taking an exam, read every word of the question because most people, as human beings, when we read, we don't read every word and we read words into what we're reading and that if you do that to a legal problem, that can completely change the way you're going to answer it or what the case means. So you got to read every word, read it word, verbatim, word for word, and make sure you do that. Uh, but any good, I mean, or good survey and textbook, Brant Davis Foot and Kelly, I guess it's still being published. Uh, but anyway, the older editions of Brinker and Wolf, actually Brinker first, then Brinker and Wolf, now it's Wolf and Guiani. Uh, and they're in the 12th edition now. But you can go back to the 5th and 6th editions. They talk about old surveying instruments that nobody knows what they are, uh, plane tables and alidades and chains and chain corrections and uh, Probably 90% of the survey trucks out there don't even have a steel chain with them anymore, which is a mistake in my opinion, because I think you, anything under 100 feet, you can chain it quicker and you can shoot it and more accurately. Yeah, I, I definitely would agree with uh, that. But anyway, uh, there, there are lots of things to, from a studying standpoint that you can do. Uh, TSPS, the Texas Society of Professional Surveyors, have an FTP site that have bukus of study material on it, such as uh, a study sheet, not more than just a blank study sheet, and you fill in the definitions or answer the questions that you want. They also have uh, stuff that I've de developed when I was doing my one-day seminars uh, for the Survey Workshop of Texas is on there. Or that complete book is on there on how to uh, how to write uh, surveyors reports. That's something people don't do that, that they ought to do on everything, every survey they do, they ought to write a short report about what they did, who they did it for, and why they did it, how they did it, where the materials st stored. Uh, George Sanders and down in, in Austin de developed a bunch of stuff that's on there. But anyway, it's got stuff from the board on it, it's got stuff from the general land office on it, and you can download it to your computer and then print it to study by. Uh, it's got the candidate guidelines on it. It's got uh, case summaries. It's got ethics in surveying. It's got how the examinations developed on it. History of Texas lands. Uh, North compared to what? That's something Daryl Shine put on there. Uh, questions. It's got various types of questions. It's got the SIT course outline. Uh, got my uh, South Surveyors Workshop of Texas study material on it. It's got a study guide for Texas surveyors. I don't know who developed that exactly. And it's got some study sheets, which that's what these are right here. Uh -huh. uh, it's got something called TLH on it. It's got Texas underbar administrative underbar codes. Uh, it's got underbar law, underbar case index. That's developed by Tyler Junior College. Of the, all the cases that uh, the board likes to ask questions about in most cases. And then it's got some stuff in the general land office on it. And it's also got a welcome statement, which is very about a one sentence uh, text statement uh, welcoming you to it. But anyway, uh, if you can study, look at this, this is where it's located.